The following presentation is controversial and may be offensive to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Radio from the heart of America now. Weirdo Carl, today is my birthday. Oh, really? And I did not know yeah, that. Happy yeah. birthday. I wish we had well, some birthday music to play, man, but I didn't know that. I would have. I could have arranged that. That's okay. That's okay, you know, but today I am 47 years old, and, you know, that happens to be the exact number of times Hillary Clinton lied during the debate on Monday night. I'm not sure if you're <laughs> and aware of that. And it also right. happens to be almost <laughs> the exact number of times that the moderator interrupted and attacked Donald right. Trump, which was 41 times. <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, it may have been more than 47 times. That's when I stopped counting, actually. I don't yeah. know if you were counting, but I stopped counting at 47. Unbelievable. And, right. And, um, you know, Carl, I don't know, if, I don't know if you've given this any thought. Well, but um, are you going to talk about the debate? I am. Okay, I am a well, bit. well, good. I want you to. And I was just going to say, you know, Mike, uh, all week long, everybody, TV, radio, everybody's been analyzing the debate, and I still have things that I have not been able to say yet. And and sure. and I've done national radio interviews on this topic this week, four or five. That's what people want to know. What do I? What did I think about the debate? But what now? You're getting ready to go off on it, and I want our Freedom Friday listeners to understand. Now, this is going to be from the viewpoint of a Canuck. Right. Of a Canadian, I mean, right. this is. I mean, this is. Mike Shoesmith is is not a U.S. citizen. He's in the U.S. a lot. He works in the U.S. a lot. But he is a full blown Canadian. In fact, you have direct ties to Scandinavia as well through your family. So, I, I mean, you, you, you. So, so okay. Let me hush and you tell us what you observed and what your opinion of the debate was. Well, you know, I, I've been listening to the talking heads, you know, Fox News and all these people uh, analyzing the debates and so on. There's a lot of, you know, pardon the expression, but there's a lot of stupidity out there, I think, because they're focusing on the scandal, right? Why didn't Donald Trump attack her on the scandal, mm -hmm. the emails, mm -hmm. Benghazi, and so on? But I think, you know, I've, I've sort of, in my mind, i sort of stripped all that away. Mm -hmm. You know, what if, like, let's say, what if there were no scandal, right? What if there was no Benghazi gate? and email gate, and rape gate, and all the gates. What if mm -hmm. there was none of that? Mm -hmm. What if she was as pure as the driven Alberta now, snow? Now, this is going to be an angle I have not heard before. See, folks, this is why you listen to Freedom Friday. Go ahead, Mike. What if she was as pure as the driven Canadian snow? Yeah, what if, right? What if? I mean, what is there left? Why? What? I mean, what angle would we as conservatives, as, as uh, you know, on your side of the border, Republicans, what angle would you take in your refutation of a reason to vote for Hillary Clinton? What, what, what reasons would you have? There's no scandals. You know, she's, she's clean on every front. Uh, what scandals would you have? You wouldn't have any. So what, what would be the angle of attack? Well, the angle of attack is still the same, scandal or no scandal. Because the, the, what you have left is still the biggest reason, even, even with the scandal, this is still the biggest reason to not vote for Hillary Clinton. Are you ready? Does it have anything to do with what I said the first 30 minutes? What you said the first 30 minutes? Well, look, uh, I, I sum it up with one word, okay? okay? One okay. word. One word sums it all for me. Okay. She's a communist! Well, thank you. See, I use the word globalist, but it's the, the same thing. It's not exactly the same thing, but it's basically anti-American. We hate America. Right, and, and this all stems back to a, her involvement back in, the, back in her college days with a guy named Saul Alinsky, which, this, I mean, this guy, you guys got to study, I mean, the audience, not you personally, but the audience needs to study her involvement with Saul Alinsky. Yeah. Because there's more and more coming out about this guy and her involvement with him. And George Soros. And George Soros. And, uh, and, um, the globalist and, uh, and communist. Globalist and communist. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, she, she, you know, in poker, there, there are, and we could talk about this poker expert who says that uh, Hillary Clinton was giving signals to yes. uh, the host. Yes. Right? We yeah, talk about it. that. Yeah. But there are other tells in poker. You know, they look for tells. They, they look at their opponents and they look for uh, signals that they give off that they have this or that sort of hand, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Hillary had certain tells that night that, as far as I'm concerned, I was very disappointed in the way Donald Trump handled 
a, a particular dynamic within the debate. Now, many people are saying that, hey, look, you know, uh, he looks more presidential by not attacking her on the rape stuff by her husband and, you know, all of the scandals. He looks more presidential, and people have been emailing me and calling me ever since Monday saying, oh, what do you think? We think that he handled it well because he didn't go after, you know, Hillary personally. And I kept, I kept telling everyone, look, there was one particular aspect that she brought into the mix, he could have gone after that and really nailed her to the wall on that. Mm -hmm. But what she had the opening, the opening uh, monologue offered to her. And she opened with, the question was, you know, how would you handle the economy? And one thing that she said there was such a tell as far as her, her worldview leaning. Yes. She said that she wants to see... Uh, profit sharing by businesses. Mm -hmm. Profit sharing by businesses. Now she has been quoted in the past as saying, "We, hey, look, we just want to take from those that have and give to those that right. don't have for the right. sake of the common good." Which is a direct quote from Karl Marx, by the I was way. Gonna say who that's, was yeah. a communist? Yeah, I was going to say that's the definition of communism. Go ahead. But you know, people need to hear this stuff. You know, really listen to what's happening here. Don't go for the. For the for the you know the the, um, the, the drama, look for the substance. The, the, don't go, you know, forget the fluff. Yeah. Look deeper into what's happening here. She said we want to take the profits from the businesses, which is just an, a, an affirmation of her earlier statement. We want to take from those that have and give to those that don't have. This is communism. She's yeah. a communist. Yes. I'm sorry for screaming, but <laughs> it has to be said. Hillary Clinton is a communist. Yeah. Now what about her? Her connection to Saul Alinsky, who was Saul Alinsky. Saul Alinsky was a political philosopher who, uh, who he lived back in, you know, he, he became very popular back in the 60s when, um, when, uh, and 70s when he was promoting this, uh, this uh, community organizer. Everybody knows what a community organizer is now because of, the, of uh, Barack Obama. Yeah. He was a community organizer in Chicago. Where yeah. did he learn this? He learned this from. Saul Alinsky. Yeah, they're from, agitators. From his book, Rules for Radicals. Yeah. Agitators. They're right? agitators. And, and they learned how to do this, all of this. Saul Alinsky was the founder of community organizing. He's mm -hmm. the founder. And Hillary Clinton, during her college days, she wrote her thesis on Saul Alinsky. She became a very good close friend of Saul Alinsky. Who was Saul Alinsky? Saul Alinsky was a political philosopher back in those days. He wrote many books. He spoke to college campuses. He is largely responsible for this this paradigm shift within academia, which has led to uh, you know college campuses and and, uh, and the university campuses becoming you know atheist indoctrination zones. Uh, Alinsky being an atheist, and more on that in a second. But um, you know she became very close to him. She wrote personal letters to him. And by the way. Uh, who did this? This was this was released by okay, this political insider. They got a hold of personal letters written by a personal correspondence written by Hillary Clinton to Saul Alinsky mm -hmm. and uh, his office's response to her. So she had a close personal relationship with Saul Alinsky, a communist. Hillary Clinton herself is a communist, and Hillary's whole life has been dedicated to socialist communist ends. Carl. The fact that the arguments and the anger fomented by Alinsky in the 40s, 50s, and 60s are the same arguments and, uh, and, and anger of today's Obama-Clinton model is another tell. For 75 years, Carl, inner-city blacks have been poor. Labor unions have worked to put their members out of a job. Every day there is some new group claiming it doesn't have equality. All of these groups have been targeted by these so-called organizational geniuses like Hillary and Obama. No matter what happens, Carl, either by the power conflict ideals of Alinsky and Obama or by power grabs and money laundering of the Clintons, the lives of these people get worse. Yeah. It's not whether Saul or Hillary are, are right about how to achieve democratic equality or those tactics are more effective, but the failure of the philosophy behind it. What is that philosophy? It's communism. Yeah. Communism. Hillary Clinton is a dyed-in-the-wool communist. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Saul Alinsky. This, this is going to shock a lot of your audience, but it's, it's just a fact. This is a fact. If we go to Saul Alinsky's book, Rules for Radicals, now you just wrote a book, right? I did. And in, in, in your book, you wrote Acknowledgement, 
at the, at the beginning of the book, you wrote acknowledgments, right? I did. In Saul Alinsky's book, have you read Rules for Radicals? I have not read the book, no, but I've read a, ch a chunk of it and about it, right. but I've not, I don't own the book and I've not read it, no. Well, listen, I've never read the book either because, you know, I, it's the same reason I don't eat feces, right? I don't want that in my head. Right. But this is from the acknowledgment section of Alinsky's book. This is amazing. This is amazing. It says this. Lest we forget at least an over-the-shoulder acknowledgement to the very first radical from all our legends, mythology, and history, the first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom. Who was that radical? Lucifer. The book is dedicated to Lucifer. Wow. Carl. Wow. Lucifer and and, and, and Lucifer... And Lucifer held up as the hero for all of humanity. As the hero. This, this is shocking. This is shocking. Barack Obama, okay, Hillary Clinton, both, their Bible, small b Bible, is Saul Alinsky's yes. Rules for Radicals, and it was a book dedicated to Satan. Right. Here, but, here's another quote by Alinsky, okay? He was interviewed just, just really shortly before his death in 1972. Mm -hmm. He was interviewed by Playboy. Right, mm -hmm. and um, he was asked about the afterlife because he was dying. Right, he had he had, um, he had heart problems, and he eventually died of a heart attack. And he was asked about the afterlife, and he said, "If there is an afterlife, and I have anything to say about it, I will unreservedly choose to go to hell." Well, think about this. Uh, think he, about this. With those words, he did that. With those words, he did that. He was a Satan worshiper. He dedicated his book to Satan, and he said, "If I have a choice, I will go to hell rather than heaven, mm -hmm. because that's." What, and then, and then the Playboy interviewer says, "Why? Why would you do that?" And he says, "Because they're my kind of people. Mm -hmm. They're my kind of people." There's nothing, the, nothing demonic about that. Well, I'm telling you, folks, uh, if you strip away the scandal, what you have left is a communist who devoted her life to following the rules for radicals written by a Satan worshiper. Yeah. This, this is not my uh, and, opinion. This is, uh, this, this, these are just the facts as I have laid them out for you. And communism, at its core, the foundation of it is atheism, because the government becomes right. has to become God in people's lives. Right. And that's right. how you keep the control. So so she's she, her whole life is wrapped up in this atheistic, satanic, demonic philosophy, communist, which is antithetical to the it's the antithesis of Americana. She hates the Constitution and the freedoms it gives. That's why she hates the Second Amendment so much. The First Amendment, oh my gosh, she loathes the First Amendment. Uh, you know, it, it, and, and Obama is is that uh, to the power of two. So, I mean, and you're, listen, I, I just look, we've got to take a time out, Mike. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's take this time out. And then we got, both of us are pretty, we're pretty fired up about this. And yeah. I've got more to say about it. And I know you do too. And our audience has more they want to, they back in just a moment, folks. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallows.